we're being asked to find the interval and radius of convergence. So let's do it. Solution. Now for this problem, I'll assume that you know all these series tests. We'll go over them, but um, you know, not, not in a ton of detail. So to find the uh, interval of convergence and the radius, we'll use the ratio test. So we'll start by taking the limit as n approaches infinity of the absolute value of a sub n plus 1 divided by a sub n. Okay, And we want this to be less than 1 for convergence. So after we work this out, we're going to set this to be less than 1 because that's when we get convergence via the ratio test. So this is the limit as n approaches infinity. So first let's look at a sub n plus 1. So just replace all the n's with n plus 1's. So you have the absolute value x minus 3 to the n plus 2, right? Because n plus 1 plus 1 is n plus 2. And on the bottom we have, again, n plus 2 times 4 to the, again, n plus 2. So this term here that I've written down, this is a sub n plus 1, right? That's all it is, a sub n plus 1. And we're supposed to divide by a sub n. So instead of dividing, let's multiply by the reciprocal. So just flip it and multiply times 4 to the n plus 1 and then parentheses n plus 1 and it's all being divided by x minus 3 to the n plus 1. Okay, Let's clean this up a little bit. This is equal to the limit as n approaches infinity absolute value, we still have that there. You can't drop the absolute value, right? We don't know if x is positive or negative so we still need to maintain our absolute values there. Well, n plus 1, we can't do much with that, so I'll write it here, n plus 1. And here we have x minus 3 to the n plus 2 over x minus 3 to the n plus 1. Let me do it over here. x minus 3 to the n plus 2 over x minus 3 to the n plus 1. This can be written as x minus 3 to the n plus 1 times x minus 3 to the 1, right? Because 1 plus n plus 1 is n plus 2, all over x minus 3 to the n plus 1. So these cancel, you're just left with x minus 3. So we have an x minus 3 in the numerator. After a while, that becomes obvious. And let's see, we have a fraction. Here we have 4n, 4 to the n plus 1, and then 4 to the n plus 2. So we're left with a 4 and also an n plus 2. So how did how'd you get a 4? Again, 4 to the n plus 1 over 4 to the n plus 2. That's 4 to the n plus 1 over 4 to the n plus 1 times 4 to the 1, right? So these cancel, boom, so you get 1 over 4. After a while, this stuff here, it, it really becomes obvious. All right, this is equal to, well, let's see, n plus 1 over n plus 2. That limit's going to be 1, so we just get the absolute value of x minus 3 over 4. I just took a 4 out of the absolute value because it's 4 and it's already positive. And we want this to converge, so we set it less than 1. Okay, so you use the racer test and set whatever you have, whatever you get, set it less than 1. All right, let's clean this up. Multiply by 4. Uh, when we do that, we get x minus 3 less than 4. That's going to be our radius. Okay, and I'll show you why in a minute and I'll write it down again. Uh, that means x minus 3 is less than 4 and greater than negative 4. If you add 3 to all three sides, you get x less than 7 greater than negative 1. Let's draw a picture of what we have. The center of this power series is 3 because it's x minus 3. So if it's centered at c, then it's x minus c, right? But here c is equal to 3. So I'll draw the 3 there. And here's the 7 and here's the negative 1. And you see that this distance here is 4. So that's that's your radius of convergence, right? Radius of convergence. All right, now we have to check the endpoints, right? Because remember, when L is equal to 1 in the ratio test, there's no info. So if I set this equal to 1, I end up getting two answers. I end up getting negative 1 and 7. And according to the ratio test, there's no info in that case. So we have to check the endpoints whenever we use the ratio test. All right, so how do you check the endpoints? Well, let's check negative 1. So you take the negative 1 and you plug it back into your original series. So let's do that very carefully. So we have, I guess I'll squeeze it in here, the sum. 
as n runs from 1 to infinity. And we're replacing x with negative 1. So we're going to get negative 1 minus 3. So negative 4 to the n plus 1 over n plus 1 4 to the n plus 1. This is equal to, I'm just going to skip the step and I'll show it on the side. This is equal to negative 1 to the n plus 1. Actually, let me not skip this step. n plus 1, 4 to the n plus 1. And then here we have uh, a 4 to the n plus 1. So what, what did I do there? Um, there was one baby step skipped. If you have negative 4 to the n plus 1, what you can do is you can write it as negative 1 times 4 to the n plus 1, right? And then you can have both raised to the n plus 1 properties of exponents, right? Really, uh, it's just algebra, but unfortunately, you don't learn it in, until calculus because uh, it just doesn't come up a lot. It comes up a lot in series. So that's, that's the maneuver there. That's the, the trick, the technique, rather. So this is the sum as n goes from 1 to infinity of negative 1 to the n plus 1 over n plus 1. This is a convergent alternating series, right? So let me show the steps for that. So we're going to use the alt series test. Squeeze it in. Alt series test. The alt series test says two things. One, the limit as n approaches infinity of your a sub n has to be 0. Well, here the a sub n is 1 over n plus 1, right? You ignore the alternating part for the alternating series test for the a sub n. Boom, that's zero. That's the first condition in the alternating series test. Two, um, our a sub n has to be decreasing. So I'm just going to say it is decreasing. Okay. So therefore, it converges by the alternating series test. So we have convergence at negative 1. That means we have a bracket at negative 1, right? So we have a bracket at negative 1. The only thing left to check now is 7. So let's do it. Let's carefully check 7. So check 7. I'll squeeze it in here. So check 7. To check 7, we'll just replace x with 7 in our infinite series. So this is the sum as n runs from 1 to infinity. 7 minus 3, right, this is a 7, 7 minus 3 is 4, so you get 4 to the n plus 1 over n plus 1, and then we have 4 to the n plus 1, they cancel, so we get the sum as n runs from 1 to infinity of 1 over n plus 1, and this diverges, how do I know that? Uh, it's almost a p-series, let's, let's show it diverges, let's use limit comparison. So let's use limit comparison. You can use direct comparison as well, but limit comparison is a little easier. So we're going to set a sub n equal to what we have, right? 1 over n plus 1. And we'll compare it with the harmonic series. Limit comparison says that if we take the limit as n approaches infinity of a sub n over b sub n, that's the limit as n approaches infinity. Now, I didn't have to put absolute value. In limit comparison, a sub n and b sub n uh, have to be positive. So it, it worked out OK this time. But you can put absolute values there. So we have a sub n. That's 1 over n plus 1. And that's being divided by b sub n. So it's being multiplied by the reciprocal. That's equal to 1. And this is a positive number. The way it's usually written in books is this has to be finite and positive. In other words, it can't be infinity. So we can use limit comparison, right? So if you take this limit and you get a positive number, limit comparison applies. It basically says um, if the sum of these terms converges, then the sum of these terms also converges. Or if the sum of these terms diverges, then the sum of these terms also diverges. So I'll say it this way. Since this series, this, since this is a divergent p series with p equals 1 less than or equal to 1. That's why it diverges, because p is less than or equal to 1. Uh, so it diverges by the p test. Our series diverges 
by limit comparison. So there is a lot going on in this problem. Now, whether or not you have to justify every every single reason like we just did here, I don't know, but I think it's worth doing. I mean, it's it's satisfying. So we have apparently divergence. So we have a parentheses here. So the final answer, let's go ahead and write it down. So the interval of convergence, I'll call it I, is bracket negative one comma seven parentheses. That's our interval of convergence. And our radius of convergence is equal to four. So we kind of rushed through all of this and went kind of fast, but I guess you could pause it and rewind it. Every single uh, step is justified, right? We checked the endpoints and we justified the convergence and the divergence at the endpoints. I hope this helps.